The VIC-20 introduced many people into the world of BBSing, but only a few of the many terminal programs that were available for the VIC have survived. They each have their own pros and cons, and I want to demonstrate a few of them here. The first program I want to demonstrate uh, is a program that came with the Commodore 1600 VIC modem, which was released in 1982. It came as a basic type-in program within the manual. So I've uh, typed this in. There's a small error in the code, uh, which I've corrected. And uh, if you're interested, there's more details on the website, uh, on the uh, Tech Tinkering website, on the associated article to this. If we look at the first line, we can see there that we've got an open statement, which is essentially opening a logical file descriptor to the modem. And then the char dollar six tells us that we want to use uh, a 300 board modem. If you want to look or if you want to alter that for something other than 300 board or you want to use something other than uh, 8 bits or uh, no parity or one stop bit then just have a look at the Big 20 programmers uh, reference guide and that will show you uh, how to alter that or failing that Vic revealed also shows it as well. So I'll run this program. Now the great thing about this program is that it's fits in a standard unexpanded VIC-20. The first thing it's doing, it's creating uh, two arrays in memory for converting back and forth between, common, uh, between Petsky and ASCII. And then if we check that we can connect to the modem, I'll just switch case. Right, there we are. And to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to connect to a CBBS uh, so it's called CBBS uh, stroke NV. So this is based on Ward Christensen's uh, computerized bulletin board system, which was the first dial-up bulletin board ever, uh, ever to be brought online. So uh, that was uh, 1978, Ward Christensen released that. And uh, right, okay, so we'll use ATDT. So we're talking to the modem. Now this is the dial command. Back when I used to use modems uh, originally, I just used ADT, uh, sorry, ATD or ATDP because um, my exchange was uh, using pulse dialing. But ATDT is for tone dialing, which is also what TCP support, uh, TCP sir supports. So if I connect to this, Now normally with this ATDT command we would put a phone number but because I'm connecting to TCP SIR I'm going to give it a telnet address. That will connect now. We're connecting at 300 board. Uh, board. As you can see we're connecting to a, a simulated altar and it's quite, it works quite well. The display uh, wraps at the end of the line, uh, but it's quite viewable. Uh, so we've got 22 columns here, we're displaying ASCII. Uh, it'd be easy to adapt this program and just remove the code that's converted between ASCII and Petsky if you wanted just to use Petsky. And uh, yeah, if you just want to connect to something easily on an unexpanded VIC-20, it's perfect in many respects. And um, uh, and the only thing you ha I have to allow for the fact is there's no menu. So if you want to alter the connection settings, then you just alter the code. But really, chances are you're going to be using the same modem over and over again. So once you've changed it, saved it, you shouldn't have to alter it again. Right, well, that's enough of that. So I'll press uh, C to skip. No, sorry, K to skip. And then we'll come out of this. And... Uh, I think the next one I will show you is uh, Victor. I've inserted an 8K memory expansion and the Victor cartridge into the Vic now. So this is how it loads. We can see the screen slightly off uh, and this is because, or I assume it's because it's designed for an NTSC screen, uh, but this is a PAL one. Uh, but for some, well, but it only works in PAL on, on the device, uh, on the device emulator. So we can see at the top that we have the ability to set the bold, uh, the bold rate up to 2400. So I'm going to set it to 1200. And then on the next page, we can see how we can convert 
Uh, we can use either no conversion, in which case it'll pet ski, or we can use ASCII conversion. And then we have below that uh, different uh, modes. So we can have 40 column, 22 column, or formatted 22 column, which wraps uh, at the word boundary uh, the, the words in uh, 22 columns. Uh, so that's fine for there. We'll reset our modem with the ATZ command. And this time, to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the 13th floor BBS. So we'll connect to that. I believe this is running on a, a real Commodore 64. There we are, we're connecting. So um, the 40 column mode works nicely. As you can see, you can just, uh, it's quite readable. Small, but readable. Right, so we're using ASCII mode. Uh, we can't use ANSI colors. Didn't take that key. Uh, we can't use IBM graphics. I don't know what that means. And I'm not allergic to shellfish. <laughs> so uh, we use 40 columns. Right, okay, so it's, it's a nice terminal. Uh, in some respects, it's my favorite terminal. There is mention about a file um, in the menu, uh, which I can't quite remember now what that's about. Presumably you could save things to disk or, or something, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have a look at this. Um, I go F4, there you are, file name. But as I say, I just can't remember and I can't seem to find the, terminal, the, uh, the manual for it. But uh, I don't remember ever using it in any case. We'll go back to the terminal. Oh, there we are. I pressed the wrong key there, but never mind. Um, you can see how it works, and you can see how it's displaying those 40 columns quite smoothly. Magazines would often publish uh, terminal programs as either basic or, mis or machine language programs that you could type in. Um, and quite a good one of these is Plus Term. It was uh, it was published in Compute magazine uh, issue 57 which was uh, February 1985 and it's a nice little program it's a combination of basic and machine language it only supports 22 columns but it does have a number of nice f features uh, the word wrap mode works really well uh, so this word wrap is also in Vic term but uh, for a typing program that's, uh, that's free uh, I think it's a nice program it's got the ability to transfer text to and from a buffer and then you can load or save that to disk or tape. And there's also some uh, some code in the article as to how you could tokenize and detokenize basic programs to or from ASCII, which uh, could be quite handy uh, if uh, you were downloading published uh, programs that have been uploaded to a BBS in ASCII format. Uh, it needs 8K memory expansion uh, without the buffers or if you want to use the buffering to load and save files, then you need a 16K or more expansion. And I'm going to demonstrate this with the 8-bit Playground BBS. Ah, one thing I've, you can see here, we're getting this uh, echo. So if I bring up the menu, change the duplex to full duplex. And whilst I'm on this menu, we'll have a look at the terminal options. There you are. I'm going to have a look at 8-bit eight, uh, eight Playground. I think we'll use DOS to, uh, sorry, uh, Petski to demonstrate this. So COM to COM, Commodore to Commodore. Uh, we'll leave word wrap on. Yep, and that'll be fine. So let's go back to the terminal. Right, there we are. So we'll dial There we are. So if I press return here, 
You can see the screen's a bit garbled and that's because it's expecting uh, a 40 column screen. But, uh, but that's alright, uh, it works well. Right, in any case, that goes through. Uh, it works as you saw up to 2400 bo uh, bode, uh, and that works in Vice. It, um, the screen does get quite garbled at times, but you can see here how, it, how the word, how everything has wrapped on the word as opposed to the end column, which makes it much easier to view then uh, in just 22 columns. And actually, it makes 22 columns quite nice to use, despite the fact that some of the um, Petsky art gets a bit garbled at times. But as a typing program, uh, it, it works really well. In the late 1980s, Craig Bruce wrote Mighty Term. Uh, I believe he wrote it at university to connect to his university computers uh, from his VIC-20. It supports 40 column by default uh, and it also supports 22 columns. The reason I want to demonstrate it here though is because it has an 80 column mode which works over two pages which uh, makes it stand out from the rest. So good day Craig. Well his name was Craig so uh, that seems fair enough. And it supports both ASCII and Petsky modes. Uh, control one brings up the menu. It, uh, it well, it should say well, it says it supports up to 2400 board, but I've only ever been able to get it working at 300 on uh, on the uh, Vice emulator. So for this demonstration, uh, I'm going to use an ASCII VT100, and I want to demonstrate the 82 mode, so the 80 columns over two panes. Uh, I think I might change the background colour to make everything display a bit nicer. We'll have a, have a black background and a white foreground. There we are. And um, yeah, sadly unfinished, but, uh, but for most purposes it works absolutely fine. I'll reset the modem and then I'm going to demonstrate this with uh, uh, BBS called a2k4.com There we are. So this is a PC BBS running Wildcat as you can see. So what you can't see at the moment, or they can probably guess, is that it's gone off the side of the screen. And then if I press F7 we can have a look at the other screen. So there we are, we've got the full width of it. Put my name in. Right, so there we are, we've got a start of a question there, but we can't see it. So if I say no, and then we've got another prompt over here. Okay, so I've got in a bit of a loop. Right, I'm going to do something quite naughty here. I'm going to hang up on this board without telling it that I'm going to do so uh, because I'm not quite sure how to get it out of this loop. So I'm going to use the uh, Hayes command escape, escape sequence plus 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 and that puts me back into command mode and then I'll hang up with 880 and there we are, I've hung up from the board. Uh, the uh, plus plus plus, the um, command escape sequence is quite interesting. So this is the Hayes one and this is what TCP SIR uses. Uh, on some modems they used a system called TIES, T-I-E-S, which was, well it was plus 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 and then 80, uh, perhaps 880 and then return. So the problem with this is that while it's unlikely, it's possible that a binary file could contain this sequence and hence the modem could randomly be put into command mode without the user understanding why. Um, whereas with the Hayes version of this system, it's actually a pause, then plus plus plus, and then a pause, and then you put in your command, say 880 or whatever it might be. Uh, apparently, employees at Hayes sometimes used to wind people up who were using Hayes, uh, the TIES system, by inserting, by, sorry, 
by inserting something like that in, uh, in text, which uh, for anybody using the tie system would hang up their modem. So uh, I'm sure the people at Hayes or those employees find it very funny. Uh, but in any case, uh, back to um, uh, back to Mighty Term. Yeah, it works really well. There's been a few proposals over the years to get back and improve it, uh, to finish it off, but I haven't seen any work done on that so far. If you want an ASCII terminal over 80 columns from your VIC-20, then this works. It works absolutely fine. The last terminal program I want to show is called Ninja Term, and uh, it's also the latest terminal program that I've come across. It's, uh, it's big, mind you. It uh, requires at least a 24K memory expansion, and it doesn't really provide all that much for all that extra memory, but it does look good. It's got a nice fat font. It only supports 22 columns, but it has a nice color support on it. It's quite buggy, and it does hang on some sites. But for the right sites, uh, it does look really good, and um, it works up to 2400 board in Vice, which is brilliant. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate it as soon as it loads on the uh, uh, Cottonwood BBS. Right, there we are. So first thing I'll do is go into the menu. So I'm using 1200 board at the moment. Uh, there is a an address book. It doesn't work very well because it only allows short addresses to go in there. The, uh, the the code for Ninja Term is up, up on GitHub, and I've uh, put a link to that in the uh, in the Tech Tinkering article that accompanies this uh, this video. It'd be nice if it was continuing to be developed because I think it's, it's starting. It, it's a great start, and with a bit more work on it, it could be ever so good. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it a Cottonwood BBS. You can see this nice big font. Uh -oh. Let's try that again. There we are. Good. Right, so we're connecting now. Press enter. Yes, we are using a Commodore graphics terminal. And there I can see the nice colors and uh, the nice display. So I'm going to put a new handle. So I'm going to make up one. I'll say lorry. And again, nice color display. It takes quite a long time to do this, so we um, we won't wait till it finishes. But at least you can see how the color hand color works, and you can see the nice font that it uses in the display. So uh, yeah, a range of uh, terminals for the VIC-20, and as you can see, they really do all have their pros and cons. This uh, Ninja Term does hang sometimes, which is a bit of a pain, uh, but it tends to be the same sites at the same points, so it is quite consistent. There must be something which is tripping it up, I don't know what. Um, but it has inspired me actually to write my own terminal. Who knows if I ever will, but uh, after seeing this, uh, I do like the 22 columns. Um, as much as it's a good technical achievement to be able to achieve the 40 columns or the 18 and 2 on the VIC-20, I do really like the uh, 22 column when it's done properly like this. So uh, if you're, um, if you'd like to see more and some links to download the software, have a look at the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, do have a look at some of our other articles and other videos on the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel. You might like to subscribe to that. And uh, I do hope you really enjoyed seeing this.